All right, we're given a polynomial in factored form, and our goal here is to pick out all the zeros, their multiplicities, and tell whether they're going to touch or cross. Okay, so when it's factored like this, that's actually pretty nice. If it wasn't factored from the beginning, you'd want to do some work to it, get some factoring done. All right, next up, let's pick out these zeros. So what we can do is look factor by factor and kind of think to ourselves, if this factor, x plus three, we want to make that equal to zero. What we could do is just kind of visualize what would I need to plug in for this x to make this factor equal zero. And since everything's multiplied together, if this was zero, zero times anything else is going to be zero. All right, so if we plugged in a negative three for that x, it's going to make that factor equal zero. For the next factor, we have x minus two. If we plugged in a positive two, that's gonna make that factor equal zero. And for the last factor, if we plugged in a negative one, negative one plus one is gonna make that factor equal zero. Next up, they're multiplicities. Multiplicities come from uh, looking at the exponents that the factor is raised to. So this first factor, we can say that's raised to the first power, so its multiplicity is one. For the next factor, we got the two from that, its multiplicity is gonna be this exponent two. And the last zero, the negative one came from this factor, well, its multiplicity is gonna be three. Okay, next up, telling whether these touch or cross. All right, even multiplicities touch, odd multiplicities cross. So it's not the actual zero itself that we're looking at, um, it's going to be the multiplicity and tell them whether that's even or odd. That's going to tell us whether it touches or crosses. And in just a second, I'll show you how these affect our graphs. All right, so one, say that's an odd, that's going to cross. Two, even, that's going to touch. And three, another odd, that's going to cross. Now the one and the three are both going to go to the other side of the x-axis after we plot these zeros but they affect it a little bit differently when it's a bigger power, bigger multiplicity, I should say. So let's go down here to our actual graph. So here's the graph of the exact same polynomial function. You'll notice we had uh, negative three, positive two, and negative one as being our zeros. And sure enough, we crossed, and we crossed here, but this was that multiplicity of one compared to a multiplicity of three. You'll notice that with the higher multiplicity, this is going to kind of hug closer to the x-axis as we go across the x-axis. Um, this is much more vertical with a multiplicity of one. The higher the multiplicity, the closer it kind of hugs in close and almost uh, crosses more horizontally at the x-axis with a higher multiplicity. Um, multiplicity of two, you'll notice this touches and comes back the same direction. Okay, finally, taking a look at that comparison between these, a single zero or a multiplicity of one, it's gonna cross pretty vertically. When you get a multiplicity of three, like we have over here, you'll see that it hugs much closer to the x-axis, kind of a blown up version of what's going on on the left-hand side. Multiplicity of two, it's gonna to touch and come back the same direction. Just for comparison, if we had a, a larger multiplicity, like say a multiplicity of four and I wanted to draw it in, that's just gonna hug closer to the x-axis so that's a, that was a multiplicity of four. Um, it's just gonna be closer to the x-axis as it comes down, touches and comes back the same direction. All right, hope this helps out in clearing up some of this confusion about um, zeros multiplicities and how they're gonna affect the graph and what they're gonna look like. All right, good luck.